Hello again, CITC participants and staff. We are here with another little instructable, which is one of my favorites, and that is how to acquire birch bark and doing it in an appropriate way. Um, we use birch bark for a lot of different things in the lab. Um, we'll make jewelry, we'll make containers, we'll make packs, we'll use the laser cutters with them. Um, we, we get a nice blend of uh, modern machinery on the uh, on the uh, traditional materials. So today we are going to be harvesting some bark off of this dead birch tree. Um, harvesting it uh, from a dead tree, it sometimes can be a little tough, um, but after it's been sitting for enough time, the inner bark gets a little soft and then the outer bark is still nice and solid. Uh, so it'll just peel off nice and easily, um, except for when it's frozen in the winter. So we also want to responsibly harvest our bark. Um, if possible, I like to harvest from dead or downed trees, trees that have tops broken off, trees that are leaning but still in the ground. Um, those are really nice too because eventually those trees are not going to make it and during the sapping season those could be really nice ones to tap and to peel the bark off of um, because you're not taking any off of a tree that has a higher chance of making it and stressing them out. So we want to look for uh, um, you know, good opportunities to harvest bark responsibly. First thing we're going to do with this is we're going to start at the top here and we're just going to make a line down the middle of the bark as far as we want to, for as long of a piece as we want. And um, Sake, this, this is a really bad time. Uh, so whenever your dog's out of the way, you can take your knife, just put it directly on the top here, pound in until you get below the bark, lift it up, slide it down a little bit, staying on the same line, and pound it some more. So and then, if we're doing it off of a live tree, and if you don't want your um, bark to tear irregularly, you can make a ring that goes all the way around the sides in the same way. But typically, if you've got a lot of bark to harvest and you've got a lot of downed trees, you don't really have to worry about it too much. You can just make one little slice to get it started. And then we can just start lifting off of it, coming from the other side also. And then we meet up there. So all of this stuff is the old inner bark. And this stuff you can scrape off with a little piece of wood. You can break it off, bend it off. You can scrape it off with a knife. Um, but this is what you'll get when you're peeling from dead. So if you're peeling from live, you'll just have nice clean bark. Now we'll peel a little bit from a live tree. Uh, when you are doing it from a live tree, you want to be a little bit more careful. There's good times of the year to do it. Um, spring works, but it's a little bit less stress on the tree after the sap has stopped running. But at the same time, a lot of bark was peeled at the time of the year while sap was running because, as we can show you, um, you can fold up birch bark into a nice container and collect your sap with it. So we found this perfect tree. It is, uh, it's fallen over this winter. Uh, it's not really going to be doing very well, so we can uh, peel the bark off of it. And I just checked it by peeling off a piece of bark, and it looks great, peels great. So let's take off another section and show you how to take uh, bark off of a still living tree. It's going to be uh, usually a little bit more challenging getting the bark off of live stuff, but for, uh, later spring and a lot of the summer, the bark comes off a lot easier. Uh, right now it does seem to be coming off pretty good, but one thing that does help is making a little spatula that we can use to separate the bark um, and, we, and we'll try not to split it by sending it through the bark, but it can just help separate uh, the outer from the inner bark a little bit. So first thing I'll do is I'll just take a stick or I'll go right up to a small dead tree and I'll put my knife in and I'll just whack down it and I'll take myself off, just a little shim, right like that. And then I'll take that shim, carve off a section of it, just make it, you don't need it that long. 
And then here, I'm just gonna get this shaved down and then get a nice little flat, almost like, almost like a spatula. And you don't want it too sharp. So I just curve it a little bit and then get a little steeper angle and just something like that. That can help, help us get around and into the bark. And uh, you can make it a little bit thinner so it doesn't um, push the bark away too much, it, more, it gets more under it. And then yeah, now we will, uh, now we'll get into the, get into the bark. So once we get our initial slits, this I made kind of like a capital I just to get the lines started that are going around, but I don't really, uh, we, I have so much bark to harvest that I don't really, it doesn't matter too much if the rips run a little bit down or up while I'm going around the circle. So I've got the slits in. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get just under the bark and slide the tip of my knife down just enough to get it open. Then I use my spatula to kind of separate it and slide right down the bark. Do it one more time. Come in little by little. And come back little by little working down. And now when you're taking the bark off, you don't want to bend it too far. Um, you kind of want to pull while lifting, you don't just want to bend it. Um, that'll help it not run. Um, and then also while you're under it, while you can see under it, you want to see if any part of the bark starts sticking to the inner bark, then you want to get under it with a knife and separate that um, before that starts tearing out and putting holes in your bark. Once we get enough of it and it looks like it's coming off real clean and easy, then we can just try to grab it in as wide of uh, spots and as many spots as we can. Sometimes you can get your arm under there and when it's a vertical tree, you can get your other arm on the other side of the bark, kind of like this and pull the whole thing. Uh, so it's all, every single part of it's being pulled evenly. But if you know the bark is really tough and you've done this enough to feel it out, you can just grab in the right places and lift up and pull outwards while circling it. So what we have is this is where I had started with my knife to trim it, uh, to go around the tree at the top and bottom. And then once it, once it hit where I stopped cutting into it, then it started to run. And so this is what you can avoid by making cuts all the way around it. But when you have a lot of birch bark, and especially on a tree like this that's dead, that we can just keep taking the uh, more and more pieces off, um, then uh, you know it's, you don't really lose too much.